Uganda first. Hello, welcome to Youth of Purpose, a show that is here to inspire you and transform you as a young person to be able to understand the issues of this country better and also put a brick in making sure that Uganda becomes a better and better country. Now we always lament about agriculture being the backbone of this country, but I don't know what really you're doing to make sure that that backbone is maintained and you're also participating as a young person because we all understand that most of the people that are doing agriculture are the people in the remote areas in the vi villages when you go back home it's your parents it's your uncles that are doing agriculture so what is going to happen if as young people we don't get to participate in agriculture and make sure that this backbone is maintained today we are talking about enhancement of youth participation in the agriculture value chain we want to understand are you really engaged in this value chain are you gaining from this very lucrative industry and today i have very viable and important people who will understand and are authoritative to talk about this gentlemen welcome to the show uh starting from my far left i will start with you kindly introduce yourself Thank you so much. I'm um, Dennis Carito. I'm a farmer in Jotera, but I'm also the CEO for the Young Farmers Federation of Uganda, an umbrella body for youth in agribusiness, the youth wing for the National Farmers Federation, the best here in Nakasero, Kampala. I am Dr. Dick Kamuganga, uh, the president of Uganda National Farmers Federation, but more importantly, uh, a former youth and the national representative of the youth here at the Uganda National Farmers Federation, uh, Dike Dego. I am a dairy farmer uh, from Mbarara and the Chiruhura. I have two farms and I'm uh, happy to be here with uh, uh, youth to speak about important matters of uh, farming and the uh, agricultural value chain. Uh, my name is Ruta Ovize, uh, team leader and Korean farmer. Uh, and I'm also uh, in the value chain of agriculture as a producer, that is uh, direct production for this Glad to be here. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Now we might be using complicated English for the Muntua Awansi. Uh, the president usually tells me that he's a villager, and I like that. So we want to make the villagers well understand agricultural value chain. What are we talking about? Agricultural value chain uh, for Muntua Wansi in Ganzi, uh, I will mix up if it is permitted. Uh, but uh, let's look at uh, the processes uh, taking place from production up to when food gets to, to the fork or on the table. From the fork, from the garden, uh, from the farm too, to the to the table, to the dining table. For the crop farmers, you know you have to look for seed. You have to clear the land, land preparation. And at that stage of pre-production, then pre-production goes to production when you plant, and then you have to weed. That is uh, management of the crop. You have to weed, you have to harvest. That is the, the, the harvest stage. Then after harvesting, you have to manage the post-harvesting. The post-harvesting that includes storage, drying, and the prevention of uh, pests entering into the crop. Let's take an example of uh, seed. Then you have the transportation to where the food is needed. Uh, even for us who eat our own food, you have to transport it from the garden to to home, to the store, and then you store this food uh, or this crop, and afterwards there is a stage for processing it to increase its shelf life for those who are involved in, uh, in, uh, in storage and uh, value addition. Then there is transportation to the market, and then uh, supermarkets, uh, then ordinary markets, then uh, uh, also international markets. So until the food is prepared to be ate by the consumer. So this process of pre-planting, planting, harvesting, 
post harvesting and, and transportation call all this sum up what we call the agricultural value chain. Perfect, uh, from the man who eats. Coming to you, Dennis, you take the dockets of the youth that we're so much interested in. Can you kindly paint for us the picture of youth participation in this value chain? Uganda is a young generation. Talking about the young generation, we mean that we have the majority of the citizens of Uganda are below the age of 30, and these make about 78% of the total population. So meaning that we are the second youngest population in the world, and this implies that majority of the citizens are young, and they're the ones to get into the agriculture sector or to even run into other sectors. But also, being the biggest population, it's also the, the population that also enjoys all kinds of food. So they need to eat. So they need to feed themselves, but also to feed others. And then the average age of the farmers globally is above 55. So meaning that if we are to sustain farms, and sustain food production, and then fight the first two sustainable development goals, poverty and hunger, youth have to be involved in all these aspects. Youth can gainfully have money, but also be employed in agriculture. And there are those that are getting money from it. And it is a plea to all that it's not only about production, but you can get along the value chain. We are seeing, and what we have seen now, after these two years of the pandemic, that even the corporate people have come to our trade, who are saying, I can't do it. But staying home for some time, they have started also to get involved in agriculture. So we are seeing it. Also, the others, with the new aspects, which also the president is talking about, science and technology, we are seeing young people coming to help farmers in digitization, in technology transfer, which is also a contribution to agriculture. As, uh, as the Federation of the Young Farmers, uh, what are you doing? I, I do remember when we were in high school, yes. uh, in senior three, that's when you're choosing subjects. Yes. And the way we could be looking at guys who are taking agriculture, and really, they would be a laughing stock. What are you doing as a Federation to make sure that you change that kind of a mindset, the myth about doing agriculture. Thank you so much. It's an interesting question. Uh, and that is where our mandate stems from, is to interest young people into the, uh, the agriculture sector, is to change perceptions and attitudes. And this is happening across board. You might be a son or a daughter of a farmer, but your parent doesn't want you to be a farmer. Yet they would nurture you into that aspect. In schools, you find that agriculture was used as a punishment. So many people are thinking agriculture is for failures, it's for, it's for unlearned. But which, which we have to demystify. Because agriculture is a strong science. Farmers, or even people in agribusiness, are the stewards of this planet. We maintain the land, we maintain the environment, we feed the nation, because if all this was not being done by a farmer, we would not, not have life. So there is a lot that the farmers are contributing because they're the stewards of this environment. Whatever happens, the trees that are grown, the, the cover that we are putting about, the practices on land, so all this has to be brought forward to the public. And it's very, very important in order to demystify that aspect is to show prominent young farmers, is to show seasoned farmers and their contribution. But also, because everybody eats food, we need to inform the public about the role of the farmer and what they do. In doing that, we can demystify the aspects of thinking that farming is not a profession, but it can be a very strong profession for everybody. And that is what we are doing. We are also going to schools 
to inform them about agriculture. Our mother organization has a, a, a motto. Farming is honorable and dignifying. So we want to show that. And it, it has to start from the young age, where we have to show people that farming can be a profession and they can take it. And the good thing also, the ministry has looked into that because we were crying about the curriculum. The curriculum is changing. It's becoming more practical. Yes, it's becoming more practical. And it is looking at certifying even the farmers at all levels through the DIT. So we would welcome that. Because if somebody is at school in is doing agriculture, and you are doing your mathematics, your chemistry, and all that. If, after my four years, I can show the Ministry of Education that I'm a very good poultry farmer, I'm a very good, I'm a very good dairy farmer. You will be certified. They, you will be certified even Perfect. from uh, all of Breaking you from there. Yes. I believe we need to um, also uh, showcase it as a money-making venture because uh, what the young people want is money. So as long as we show them how they can be able to make money through agriculture, I think it's one aspect to be able to attract them into this industry. Coming to the person who has been making money through this industry, Seth does uh, inspire me because of what he's doing. Uh, he, heads the, uh, he, he's, he comes from the Ankole Young Farmers Association and I believe from his story you can be transformed. Seth, what is barring young people, youth like you, from doing what you're doing, participating in agriculture. What are those challenges? Uh, thank you, Ivan. Uh, first of all, as uh, Mr. Dennis mentioned, uh, all what uh, the mother organization, UPE, uh, looks at, that agriculture is an honorable venture. It's true. But I would have to first take you back a bit to uh, maintain <coughs> Uh, 92 when they were looking at you know transforming the structure of the economy of Uganda, they did privatization and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, by then, the government was the biggest employer and it still had the opportunity for people to be employed. So they, they did not give much attention to farming uh, by then. So much of the people took it on as a subsistence. I think. Oh, yeah. uh, it's only of late when people have had this big challenge of unemployment that they now wish to actually jump into agriculture mm -hmm. after looking at it as you know something that would be big. Uh, being in agriculture, first of all, it's true, it's lucrative. You will still make money. Uh, but uh, there are a few glitches here and there that need to be fixed. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that young people would face, especially those who are actually doing it and they are, they are producing the, the goods, you know, oh, yeah. is that they lack uh, information about the opportunities available. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I may be having my milk from the farm. Uh, the price that I'm offered to is by someone who comes to pick it from the farm. I don't have information that actually I can come up with a memorandum of understanding or partnership with the restaurant or hotel mm -hmm. where we we'll have a better price. They don't oh, yeah. have this information. So uh, our duty or our stakeholders is to inform these people who are there. We say, no, if you turn people, why don't you come together and you find market for your milk? Mm -hmm. You don't have to complain that you know the people who come for the milk at the farms, oh, yeah. they're not paying us good money. Mm -hmm. uh, and another challenge is that, yes, the government has put the policies there, uh, the consumer protection rights, all those, but we, uh, there is a difference between you have it on paper but it's not working. The government should be you not know, put more intense. I'll give you an example. When we had COVID, mm -hmm. when there had restrictions of curfew, uh, masks, they were so tough with us, mm. we realized that the law works when it came to COVID. But when we have these policies for farmers, they don't work. We have where they say, you know, young people should have this certain percentage in these deals. For instance, our government has several deals that are negotiated with. They have trade deals with the European Union, with the you know, USA. Oh, yeah. They are good, lucrative. Mm. But there are people who are exporting there, but there are small clauses there where they, where they say that women and youth should have this percentage. But they are actually never implemented. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should look at, you know, government intensifying its uh, policies and making it practical for us to know join the, the agriculture value chain. Yeah. Also looking at, you know, challenges of finances. It's true. Uh, the value chain is an ecosystem. We must accept that. 
and the, there are people who are doing the production, but much of the people can be along the, you know, the value chain. But they lack finances. For mm -hmm. instance, you can look at trading in cereals. I just go to the farmers who are producing. I buy it at 500 or 400, and I'm selling it at you know 600. Mm -hmm. uh, but I may not have the capacity to you know buy from the as farmers. Much, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and sell as much as you oh, know yeah. I've, I've, I've bought from the farmers. So it's a challenge. We should be able to know, have contracts, have these financial institutions that will accept these contracts and say, mm -hmm. the young people, we can trust them, we will give them the, 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 the money without the contract, I think, verify what they are doing. I think the biggest issue is uh, collateral. Yeah. Because one, the young people don't own land, they don't have anything they can take as security to be able to access the finances. Yeah, so yeah. That, that, that's so true. So those are some of the challenges, but truth is, there is money in farming, mm -hmm. but you have to simplify it for the people you know to, to participate. Because no, yeah. other businesses are simple. I will know, I get money from here, sell this and get that and go away. But agriculture may not be like that. Yeah. Much of where the money is, is the perishable goods. So you should have the equipment, the resources. And it's a uh, truth be told, capital you need to invest in a lot. The capital has really been made. So, I also look at financial institutions coming in with uh, products for young people yeah. and those ones that really do have them like you know UDB, young people don't know about it, mm -hmm. you have to be in the top room or you know to know about this information and you don't know who to ask, you walk into UDB and you'll be told that ah, okay, what do you want, this and this, they will share with you a flyer, you're not aware of you know, business development plans, you don't know all this paperwork, mm -hmm. so they should be programs first of all, take them through all this, support them, then they can take on agriculture. And, and usually, uh, I, I understand UDB has a, a certain amount of money they give out. You will not go to UDB to ask for 40 or 50 million. They will not, giving it, uh, they, they will not give it to you. So for a young person, they might not have the capacity, for example, to go and, uh, you know, uh, uh, ask or request for 500 million. They might not have the capacity to. Thank you so much, Seth. Coming to you, Doctor. You've had all these challenges that Seth, has put across and uh, he does represent the young people, the youth, the challenges they are facing out there. What are you doing as the Federation to solve the challenges that he's talked about? Uh, thank you, Ivan. Uh, one of the first uh, uh, steps we have done, uh, you have had uh, the CEO of uh, the Federation of Young Farmers calling us the mother organization. Uh, we have a responsibility to mobilize mm. in the country. We have a responsibility to organize uh, farmers in the country. And we have a responsibility to empower. Dennis and Thith will tell you, uh, basically, had it not been these responsibilities, mm. they themselves would not be yeah. here. Mm. So we did one step. Uh, even Jesus mentioned it in his uh, struggle when he was on earth. United we stand, divided we fall. There is no house can stand when it is divided. I think he's the one who said it, the mm. basis of that. So the, uh, uh, step number one is to get them organized. And uh, this we have offered support to the young farmers here, mm. the CEO here. We collaborate, they are just in, a, that's why you are here. You didn't find us somewhere else. So organization, mobilization, organization, and empowerment. And then, and then expose. So we uh, allowed Dennis. He has done a very tremendous work. Uh, at least a young, young champion, I met him recently, but through him. Uh, he has done tremendous work in mobilizing and empowering the young farmers. In, uh, out of the 146 districts in the country, we have almost 90% presence of the young farmers. Every district farmers association has a youth desk on it. So the idea of mobilization and organization and empowerment is one. He, he has uh, taken young farmers to, uh, for exposure. I am an economist and what I learned in uh, distribution of development, if you look around uh, countries on the coast mm. uh, near the sea, they are more developed than they. Our neighbor Kenya is more developed than Us. and even in Tanzania. Mm. Recently catch up, uh, you can look at their GDP per capita. 
Uh, why? Because of the, the coastal line. What does it do? Exposure. It brings you closer to the ideas of other distant other places. Distant. So the exposition that he is doing uh, with uh, the young farmers, uh, which uh, comes from him himself being empowered, is those things we are doing. Number two, uh, we do speak for. We raise the voice. Mm. So what we've been doing is uh, to ensure that these challenges are known by government. In some way, the government usually does is government. Mm. Uh, we are voluntary organizations. Nyekundire, uh, mm. So it is. Uh, we do not have mandate to tell government to allocate resources yeah. to us. Mm. So that, but we are happy with the current uh, within the framework of NDP3 during this term of office. The President of the Republic of Uganda has helped, has uh, pro promised us through OWC to support some of our initiatives. And one of those initiatives is to avail resources to the farmers. After training them, the young man has indicated uh, the information gap, what is needed and where it is needed, who needs it, at what cost. So one of those things uh, the CEO also mentioned about digitization. Mm. We will be digitizing information. The young farmers are already doing uh, the content digitization, uh, a, 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 a video library where you mm. access what you need if you're going to start something. But we will also accelerate working with them. I uh, had a meeting with, with you yesterday on these, on these matters. Accelerate integration of the youth within the agricultural mm. value chain. This is our strategic agenda. Integration of the use within the agricultural value chain. So we, we exposing them to opportunities. Uh, but we have also been uh, looking at partnership with the likes of financial institutions. Know-how is uh, problem number one, mm. finance is problem number two, mm. and then the supporting to get the finance other mm. things there. And then for me, as a village, I categorize those know-how, finance, yes. and market. And market. Yeah, yeah, so once you solve those three, the things fall in place. Yeah. The, the idea of attracting a youth in agriculture, uh, let me tell you what I have learned. Incentives, uh, being an economist is, yes. a, is a bad thing. Incentives <laughs> is, a, is a, a beautiful thing. Yes. The moment you Incentive. see the reason to do something, and uh, it is paying, you will get it. The, the, you don't need even to shout, uh, don't give today, don't make it sexy, just make it profitable. You will see how young people are going to come in. Mm. Amazing. Um, coming uh, back to you, Dennis. If you want to venture into agriculture, but also to participate, not only participating, but benefit from the agricultural value chain, what should I be doing or what should I do? Where do I get started from? If I want to be a prospective and a profitable young farmer, some of the key things that we should look at are, are one is the know-how. If I want to be a strong dairy farmer, what we usually think as young people is that I've seen Mruana the late Murwan and his family getting money from, from dairy cows. One runs immediately, puts, puts 10 dairy cows without the know-how. So it is important to continuously learn on the job because there is no sector where we don't make mistakes, but there is chance to rectify them. So know-how, the skills are very important. Then two is to start small. We most of the times want to start big thinking that uh, I want to make as much money as possible. I haven't seen any sector where today I put in this and the next, next day I'm a millionaire. It's not very easy. If I'm a farmer, I will, I, some of the times I can use my eight hours, sleep comfortably, 
have a good evening and the next day I'm on the farm. So everything, everything you have to try for, but you have to start small. The other aspect is that we need as young farmers to have peers because we need to learn from each other and to share experiences. So if I want to be profitable, I need to also see what others are doing and also to study the market because what, what pulls, as he has said, an incentive? Because the biggest puller of this agriculture value chain is, is the market. But the key thing is to learn <coughs> the practices of this trade of agriculture mm. together with others and then start small, mm -hmm. but also keep on doing mm -hmm. that thing consistently. Thank you so much, Dennis. Um, I'll give each one of you just 30 seconds to be able to give a message to a young person out there who wants to get engaged in agriculture and how the challenges that we are facing as young people as far as participating in this value chain is concerned, starting with you, Seth. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, young people, uh, farming is profitable, but if you want to make the money out of it, take it as a business, as a very say, and you must have passion for it. If you can't have the passion and you're not looking at it as a business, please find something else to do. Thank you. I will take the prerogative of being a president and make 45 seconds. Let me begin with three main points why it is going to be fascinating to be in agriculture. Uh, the population growth. It is estimated that we will have 25% of, of the population in the world in, in Africa by 2050. Uh, the more mouses to feed, the more, the more need for food. Yes. The more need for food, the more profitable the food will be. So come to agriculture. Number two is climate change. Climate change is affecting different parts of the world. And Africa includes it. But why is the benefit for the African youth? Is that uh, this land, for arable land for agriculture, is highly concentrated in Africa. 65% of it is in Africa. So if you want to become rich, please come to agriculture. So be precise, let me borrow from him. Start small, the opportunities are there. Look at it in terms of pursuit of wealth rather than uh, what you used to hear as punishment. Thank you very much. Then lastly, as the, the Young Farmers Federation, please uh, follow us on Twitter at Unifa1 but also on our Facebook at UNYFA, we have a lot of opportunities for those prospective farmers. We talked about the international exposure to German. The program is on. Those who are interested, please come to us. We have still slots for those that are interested to go to Germany to come and learn, but also come back and change their businesses. Thank you. Youth of Purpose is brought to you by the National Secretariat for Patriotism McCall, Office of the President. Under the theme Uganda first. Empowering the young people who are the biggest population of this country is a patriotic role. And I believe everyone who is in a decision-making position will take the young people so serious and give them the attention that they do deserve. I hope you have been able to learn a thing or two from this episode and keep watching Youth of Purpose. You can catch up all the other episodes on our social media platforms. You can also follow me on my social handles. That's on iTumkunde. That's on uh, Facebook, iTumkunde on Twitter and all the other platforms. I thank you so much for watching Youth of Purpose. See you next time. Youth of Purpose. Brought you by...